Oh no, Marmaduke died. Well, he was an 80 year old Great Dane. Oh, hello there. Today's lesson is about the intrepid journalist who pioneered the expose. What the hell, Clocko? This is, <laughs> it's not a Denny's. What? You never seen a gear diner before? Come on, true detective. Drop trout and show me that hog. Okay, we are not exposing ourselves. I said expose, right? Like the piece of journalism that uncovers a scandal. Uncover, cover up, make up your mind. Before she became Nellie Bly, Elizabeth Cochran was a poor young woman just trying to make ends meet. Ooh, like you would say that. No, no. One fateful day, she read an article in the newspaper titled, What Girls Are Good For? that said that women's only use was keeping house and making babies. Cochran wrote a scathing response letter, and the editor thought it was so compelling, he offered her a job immediately. Her first staff assignment? A rebuttal called The Girl Puzzle. Shit on my grave. <clears throat> it's time for... The Girl Puzzle. This is a simple game, Clocko. I'm gonna ask you a question, and if you get it wrong, you're gonna get the spritz. Sound good? Okay, question one. Which one of these is a woman? Uh, it's impossible to know. The one on the left? Very good. That's Nellie Bly herself. The other guy is Joseph Pulitzer, who she would later work for, arguably saving his paper from ruin. Question two. Which one of these two intrepid reporters was the basis for Lois Lane? The brunette. Hey, you're pretty frickin' good at this. Question three. Can you tell me which was a respected journalist in their day? Uh, trick question. They're both respected journalists. In your hideous dreams, Clocko. Do not bring that in here. Do not bring that negative energy into this space. Pulitzer was a journalist. But since Cochran was a lady, she was called a stunt girl, which is the same job with a fun condescending name change. And lower pay, of course. Also, since it was considered totally nasty, not in a fun way for women to be journalists at all, they all had to have non de plumes. Thus, Nellie Bly was born. Oh yeah, I used the name Hunter Biden when I published my Peppa Pig fan fiction. It's a beautiful story of enemies to love. As Nellie Bly, she began going undercover to expose the exploitation of women in lower classes. When sweatshop owners complained to the newspaper, she was reassigned to the goddamn fashion beat. So, she quit and did what all rudderless artists do. Sold feet pits? Moved to New York, she, that's what she did, she moved to New York. Pulitzer's publication, The New York World, said they would hire her if she went undercover as a crazy person and got committed to a notorious mental asylum for women. Doctors in her day were readily locking up women, diagnosing them as lunatics for symptoms like having a temper or cheating on her husband, Charlene. Nellie Bly used institutionalized misogyny to her advantage. She booked herself into a home for wayward girls and enacted her scheme to get sent to Blackwell Island's lunatic asylum. She faked amnesia, stared a lot, yelled at other girls and said they were crazy, and she said she was from Cuba. That was all it took the hero doctors at New York City's lunatic asylum to admit her. I still clap every night at seven. She spent 10 days inside and wrote an expose revealing the rampant, sometimes life-threatening patient abuse. Worst of all though, perhaps unsurprisingly, most of the patients she met weren't ill at all. Many were penniless immigrants who couldn't speak much English. The story, paired with her compelling writing style, kicked off Nellie's 10-year career of exposing the seedy underbelly of New York City's power brokers. And yet exposing my seedy underbelly made Cogsworth step in front of a bus. In a time when women were rarely even given a byline, Nellie Bly's name was in the titles of her articles. Nellie Bly a prisoner. Nellie Bly describes war horrors. Nellie Bly buys a baby. Nellie was fearless and used her career to show the world that women can do anything, even going so far as to circumnavigate the globe and setting the record with her time for a story. And all because some dumb douche in Pittsburgh wrote a sexist article? I gotta meet this lady. Uh, welcome. Uh, we don't have any snacks, but you can lick the floor. I have exposed the inhumane treatments in New York City sweatshops. I infiltrated the smoky back rooms where lobbyists were buying politicians. I even uncovered a black market baby buying business, but I have never seen a scene quite this dismal. I was gonna What's put a like the deal here? 
That guy preaches male-centric versions of history and forces me to listen. Hey, oh. what the fuck? Sha cha cha. I'm sorry, that's a fucking clock. What are you gonna? It's a stupid asshole that can't even read. So. Uh huh. Uh huh. Does he always speak to you in such a British manner? Yes. He's always screaming at me. <laughs> Nellie Bly uncovers misogynist indoctrination camp. What, no, I, what, no what, I am the victim here. She puts her hands in my mouth when I yawn. Mm, and how much do you get paid for this position? Paid? Like money? Oh, I've never been paid at all, Miss Lady. Uh, unbelievable. Nellie Bly uncovers interdimensional forced labor ring. Oh yeah, oh, oh that checks out. We're getting a lot of labor done around here. You see everything is, there's a lot of work put into this. Name one labor you've done. Nellie Bly finds local sexist and breaks him like a toothpick. No. Never forget who holds the tower here, old man. Do you think she was mad at me?